and welcome to my 50 second video. Thank you so much for joining me if you are a return subscriber or hello if you are new. My name's Adrena. I'm an Australian teacher and mum currently on a break at the moment trying to figure out this whole teacherpreneur online space selling my teaching resources and clip art on Teachers Pay Teachers and online. So if you've been following along my journey, you know that I started my first Teachers Pay Teachers store in 2020 when the whole pandemic hit and I started my second Teachers Pay Teachers store just selling clip art which is linked to this channel to Lazo Clip Art in May of 2021. And in Tolazo Clip Art I've been selling for a bit over a year now and in that year and a bit I have learnt some harsh truths. I've learnt some things. <laughs> So I just wanted to put it in a bit of a fun kind of just playful video and talk about 30 harsh truths if you want to be a cliff artist on Teachers Pay Teachers. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alrighty, number one, your first clip art set if you're a newbie is not and won't be your best set. Trust me, it won't. Take my word for it. Even when I started to Lazo clip art, when I go back to my first clip art set, and I'll insert a picture of my first clip art set I put on to Lazo, which was just these three stick figure people, <laughs> they're not gonna be, and they weren't my best set. I didn't know Procreate as well as I do now, and I forgot to do some cropping, and I left a few little bits and pieces in those <laughs> stick men people that I uploaded, but, in saying that, like I still got re good reviews, but they are definitely not my best set. And they were my first set and they were free. So your first free set that you upload to Teachers Pay Teachers is not gonna be your best. And trust me, you will see your improvement over time that you do this and you'll look back at some of your first things and you'll be shocked and you'll be like, oh my goodness, what was that? <laughs> so for a prime example, let me just show you in my first store, the creative table. Let me show you the very first clip art sets that I sort of did. Now, mind you, I created my clip art in PowerPoint at that point, and yeah, they look like this. Look, they're kind of cute. They're not too bad, but they're definitely not my best set, if that makes any sense. But anyway, your first set is not going to be your best, so don't stress over it. The second harsh truth is there is a learning curve to the tech side of things. So whatever program you choose to use, there is going to be a learning curve. So whether you choose to use Procreate, Affinity Designer, Adobe Illustrator, Clipart Paint Studio, Creator, whatever pro platform that you're, you choose to use, if you don't know much about that program when you're first beginning, there's gonna be a learning curve. So you can't expect to know it overnight. You're gonna to have to do some learning, you're gonna to have to do some tutorials, you're gonna to have to learn your platform of choice when you're starting to create clip art. Now this is just a harsh truth because sometimes in our head we're like, okay, I can do this and then we go to try it out and you're like, oh, this is harder than I thought. So just be mindful if you aren't picking it up straight away, whatever platform you're doing, just keep going and keep practicing and you will get there. They just do take a bit of a learning curve with the tech side of things, as well as trying to learn actually how to upload to Teachers Pay Teachers as well. Give yourself some grace and just know that the tech side does come with a bit of a learning curve and just take it day by day if you're just beginning in this space. The third harsh truth is fill up your store. <laughs> fill up your store, guys. Fill up your store. So basically, if you were to think of Target, for example, let's just use Target because that's the first thing that popped into my head. All right, Target. If Target literally had three products in their store, you probably wouldn't go there unless it was literally the exact product that you needed. And that's the same with any store. People like options. People like to see that your shelves are stocked, that you have a store that has options. So fill up your store. In the beginning, it can be kind of disheartening when you have like one product and you're like, oh, I haven't made any sales. But you're like, you only have one product. People need to see more than just one product in your store before they make a purchase from you. So harsh truth number three, just fill up your stores with products. Harsh truth number four, you know the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day. So these things take time to develop, they take time to create, 
clip art in general, drawing in general, creating things takes time. And I know as a person that is a creative person, sometimes you just want it done so quickly. <laughs> and so you just want it done. And it, sometimes it just can't be done. It has to be worked on and it has to be altered and it has to be, there's a, a lot of time that needs to be spent on creating this to get a successful and a high quality product. And that's just a harsh truth because things take time and just know that they do. And that's okay, except that they take time and it is what it is. If Rome wasn't built in a day, it takes time. Number five, passion, trend, demand. Okay, so what I mean by this, these are some things that you need to think about if you are going to be a clip artist. On TPT. So you might decide you want to create things for passion, things that you're passionate about, things that you enjoy creating, things that you like creating. Secondly, you might want to create things that are trending. So trending things are things that are coming and going and these can be quite profitable. And then thirdly, you might need to think about what do people actually want? What is there a demand for? So think about these three things and you're most likely going to have to create things in these three sections, passion, trends, and demand. It's up to you what you want to create, but they're just some things that you need, might need to consider when you're creating. I guess you can't always just create for passion, you can't always create just for trends, and you can't always just create, create for demand, because sometimes you might create things that you don't actually want to create if you're just doing demand. So just have a feel of what the things out of these three topics that you want to create, and just think about adding all of those three sections into your store. Some days you might feel passionate about making something, go with it. Other days you might be like, oh, I know this is trending. Let me get on this trend bandwagon. For example, when you look at TBT many moons ago, they had the whole Chevron thing. So I'm sure people that made Chevron digital papers or things that had Chevron on them, like clip art wise, they probably did quite well when that was like a thing. <laughs> And then thirdly, like if you are looking through Facebook forums or whatever and you're looking for what is the consistent thing that people are asking for, if you're creating something that fills that demand, you might find quite a lot of profitable things going that direction. So think about those things and what you want to do in your store. Number six, you're not a failure if you don't sell any of your clip art designs on Teachers Pay Teachers straight away. <laughs> Like I said before, things do take time, but you're not a failure if you don't sell things right off the bat. If you do happen to sell things quite quickly, that's amazing and you know you're onto something, but you're not a failure if you don't sell things your first month, thing, even if it's zero your first month. Just keep pushing, keep going. You're not a failure. And also think about the time that you're actually uploading your first product. If it's in June or July, you might find that that's a season where it's lower, for some people and you might find that you didn't sell anything those months because teachers are on break in America. So just be mindful of that and just think about well, what month of the year I'm actually uploading my first product in. All right, number seven, consistency is your best friend. Hi guys, what's today? All right girl, you know what we can do? You know what we can do? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know what we can do? We can watch YouTube or Netflix all day. What do you think? I'm thinking YouTube, just because it's like easier. I can just watch it on my iPad. But if you want to do Netflix, I'm down for that too, girl. We can do Netflix. Just go chill on the couch. Let's get comfy. <laughs> So, you win. Yeah. Don't say no. You know you need it. Treat yourself. Treat yourself, girl. You know you need this time. You know you need this time to relax. Come on. So, I am actually just reading this book today and if you want to join, that's okay too. But I've got things to do. I've got to be places and I've got a, I've got a time limit. So, if you want to hang out, you can read this book with me for an hour and then... And then we can go and do some more work. Yeah. And then we can do an hour Pomodoro work session. 
and then we can plan everything to a T and then we can just do so many things today that is off our checklist. Are you in? Are you in? Are you in? Let's do it. You've got to make your mind up in about two seconds because I have things to do. I've got places to go. So if you want to come with me, you've got to come with me now. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, let's go. Hey girl. So what I was planning to do today was work on my project that I've been working on for like three weeks now. So I've been just doing a little bit every single day. And I mean, if you want to come help me with that, then you're so welcome to come do that. I just really need to work on this because I'm so close to the finish line now. I've just probably got another two weeks left on this, but if I don't work on this today, then it's not going to be finished. So I need that time to be able to work on this. If you want to come join me, totally up to you, no stress. <laughs> that was literally so cringe, but literally just choose who your best friend is going to be. Choose consistency. <laughs> Productivity is the second runner-up out of the best friend category, but consistency is going to help you through most things. Showing up is going to be your biggest thing overall. You can be productive in one session, but without consistency, you're not going to move the needle. You're not going to move forward. So make best friends with consistency. Okay, number eight. Not everyone is going to like or need your clip art. That's just a harsh truth. You're not going to be able to serve everyone. Just like some people like peaches and some people like apples. Just know that you can't serve everyone and not everyone is going to like what you do. So in that case, just accept that and be like, okay, my stuff is not for everyone. Not everyone needs this type of clip art and that's okay. But the people that do want that clip art are going to be your people. They're going to be your people. So. Just create things that you feel like you, that you want to create and that you think there might be a need for. It's just, it's a harsh truth because you just can't serve everyone. No business can. There's just so many people in the world, so many different things going on and you just can't serve everyone. And it's not to take that as a personal attack because some people are high school sellers. They might not need cutesy clip art, vice versa. The people in primary years aren't going to need high school mitosis science clip art. <laughs> you just can't serve everyone. There's different categories for a reason and you've just got to do what you enjoy and what you find passionate to create and put out to the world. All right, number nine, being different and unique is literally your superpower. So long are the days where being exactly the same or being a sheep and following someone else was cool no 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 now are the days where being different and unique is cool being different and unique is going to make you stand out you want to stand out as a clip artist and you want to do things that are going to make you memorable and are going to make you stand out do things that are uniquely you you don't have to ask anyone what they think you can do what you want to do at the end of the day you can because it's your business and and you don't have to do exactly what everyone else is doing even though that's the formula that's the technique that's the method whatever you don't have to follow that route if you don't want to if you want to just show up as yourself and be yourself and create things that you want to create then you can do that and that's just up the money side of things is just a plus and a bonus but really, just the harsh truth is being yourself and being self-aware of who you are, what things that you like and what things you like to create, what makes you happy, the little things that make you you. And they're just, they can be little things. They don't have to be big things. They are the things that are going to make you stand out. All right, number 10. If you don't get anything else from this video, please listen to this one. Number 10. Do not create clip art of recognizable or popular storybook or movie characters or characters in general that you have not created. I made this mistake in the very beginning of my TPT journey. I made Lego clip art and I soon realized I was not allowed to make Lego clip art. I made a few things that were questionable that I did not know at the time. 
you know, what, like, I didn't know that was trademark. I didn't know all those things. It was so brand new to me, this online world that I just didn't know. I took the advice of create what your kids liked in your classroom. So my kids in year one at the time loved, not at the time, but the year before loved Lego. So I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to create Lego clip art because hooray, my kids like Lego. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. That is just a mistake I want to share with you and you can learn from my mistake. Do not create Lego. Do not create anything like Dr. Seuss, Disney, uh, you know, what else? Cat in the Hat, Rainbow Fish. I have made a few mistakes in my early journey and they were all taken down and I'm glad that they were and I took a lot more down from when I first first started and I feel super bad about it because I just had no idea at the time because I jumped in so early and I had no videos like this saying that you're not allowed to do that and I just had no idea. So I'm telling you right now, please do not create clip art that is of popular characters because they have a trademark under them. The majority of the ones that are big ones like Minions, Disney, a lot of the big popular names. If you can recognize that character from a storybook or from a movie or something of the sort, just do not touch those waters. Do not go there with your clip art. Just don't. It can be very, you don't want to risk your store. You'll see a lot of people on Etsy, a lot of people in other different marketplaces that might have created the clip art like that, but it's not allowed. So please don't create clip art like that based off books or anything of the sort. Like I said, I learned early on in my early journey and you know, it just, I wish I knew that sooner. I would never have touched that if I knew that sooner. And so if you've watched this video and you've not started your clip art and you were thinking of creating something based off a popular character series, don't do it please because it's you don't have the permissions to unless you get the permissions from those companies which is very hard to do especially the big ones then the big name ones then just don't do it and I'll see if I can put a couple on screen here some of the names of things that you just really should not touch all right number 11 people come into clip art creating at different levels so you might be someone that has never done a lot of online digital work you've never played with any of these programs like procreate affinity designer any of the programs that you can create clip art on you might have been someone that just liked to draw and you want to pick this up but you have to just realize that there are other people coming into this uh, game on Teachers Pay Teachers that are or they've done graphic design for 10 years plus or that was their job for a long time before they you know maybe became a mom and then they wanted to stay home and then they got into TPT as a clip artist. There are so many different journeys, so many different people coming in at different levels. So do not compare your day one to someone else's day 1000. So just be mindful of that when you're looking at other people's work saying, oh, I will never be as good or whatever. Like I said, some people just really want simplistic things. Like literally, you will be surprised at what actually people will buy. And it's fascinating to me in some way. If you're beginning this journey as wanting to be a clip artist and sell your clip art, that think about your skill level and think about can you do more things to upskill yourself I'm still learning myself I've been someone that I have loved drawing from a very young age I've done a lot of drawing from a very young age I never took it like my sister she's really good at art she's like pursuing art as a career and she's getting into illustrating and stuff like that and myself I went basically straight out of high school to teaching straight away but I've always loved drawing like literally on my year seven end of year book what did I write down on my job <laughs> was an artist I didn't know if I actually wanted to be an artist back then but I just liked drawing so I wrote artist I didn't write teacher as such but I've always loved education I've always loved that's another story for another day but all I'm trying to get here is basically just be mindful that people are coming at different skill levels but just because they're coming at different skill levels doesn't mean you can't do it too. All right, number 12, you don't have to be the most artistically, technically creative person in the world to be able to sell clip art. Some people really like simplistic things and I will say, and I'll just give you an example. I have this irregular shape set on my TPT store. I'll show you here. 
And so it's literally just a regular shapes that I've created on Procreate. And I'll just show you, like it hasn't sold that many times, but I have sold some of these. And it's kind of amazing to me, you know, like out of 90 views that 20 people have wish listed this particular product. And so I've made about 35 something dollars on this particular product. And that's $35 I did not have before. So <laughs> that was off a simple, a simple, a simple, a regular shape clip art set. So yeah, just take that with a grain of salt. I know that some people just want simplistic things to be able to add to their designs and just know that there is a space for whatever kind of clip art that you want to create, even if it's really simplistic and basic. All right, number 13, pricing is hard. All right, pricing. Okay, pricing is so tricky for, I feel like a lot of people. What I want to suggest to you is have a look What's on the market at the moment? What are things selling for? Look in the niche or the categories that you're wanting to sell in and look at the kind of price ranges. Now, you don't have to price exactly the same, you don't have to price lower, and you don't have to price super high. You do have to come with an agreement with yourself that sits well with your own person personal values as well and think about what you would be happy to let that work go for but please be mindful and consider there is a 15 cents I'm pretty sure transaction fee for anything that is under three dollars everything that I have priced in my store for Talazo is three dollars and over I haven't I haven't got anything under three dollars so the only time you'll be able to access anything that is under three dollars from my store will be when it's on sale and well sometimes when I participate in like hashtag sales and stuff like that then sometimes they'll go down to one dollar but that is probably the cheapest you ever get anything from my store from and I've made that a thing that I want to do because that is what I'm happy with and that is what I'm happy to let go with and I, do, I am mindful of that transaction fee so and I also think about the way to price also, you can also think of it as have a set amount in your head and add the amount of value that you would feel that that amount would give. So say if you wanted to, to create a clip art set for $10, what would a $10 clip art set entail? What would be included in something that you'd be willing to part $10 for? So you wouldn't probably just have one image of something in it unless it's like an exclusive thing that no one else has or whatever. But uh, a good example, I guess, too, is Kate Hadfield. She has her beautiful sets for $10. A lot of her stuff in her store is $10. And look at all the amazing value she adds to that. And she's priced that at a particular uh, price point, And she's added a lot of value into those. Again, though, pricing is hard. And it will depend up to you. I'm not here to tell you what you can do for pricing. But pricing is hard. It's just the harsh truth. Pricing is hard. And just be mindful pricing can change so don't need to be like oh I've set it at this and it can I can never change the price no if it's not selling or if you want to feel like you want to up the price you can do that as the business owner think about how many sales are on at the shops you know when you go shopping they go from regular price to uh, on sale prices and sometimes you know when like especially in Australia when there are floods and stuff like that where it's harder to get seasonal fruit the price rises because the demand is there but you know there's it's harder to access those particular pieces of food so you know that pricing system happens all different places in our real life and so that doesn't mean it has to be any different on your clip art store if you want to raise or lower the price you can but totally up to you and I just suggest thinking about what you want to add to that value of money. So if you have a $3 set, what do you, what are you happy to part with? For me, generally, if it's a digital paper set, I do $3 for that uh, one design or, or basically, or it can be more than one design, but $3 for 12 digital papers basically. And I do do it like $3, $3.30 for um, anything that's over 12. And then if it's a bigger pack, like it's hard, like I said, pricing is hard. I'm still learning, I'm still figuring out the kinks in my store and stuff like that. But I am, I do know that I'm happy with setting my price at $3 for 12 things, whether that is clip art or whether that is digital papers. And I'm, and I'm happy to let that go for that amount, but it will be totally up to you. Your values might be different to mine and you might want to have you know, a different price point. It could be higher, it could be lower. It's totally up to you. 
Alright, 14. Having a cohesive clip art cover will make you more memorable. When it comes to clip art, clip art is a little bit different because when you become more established, people like to collect from you. When I think of like the bigger clip artists on Teachers Pay Teachers, like Sarah Pecorino, Edge Eclipse, Rainbow Sprinkle Studio, all the other kind of clip artists that are like really thriving, it looks like they're thriving from their businesses, they have a very distinct look in their clip art covers. So when you see the clip art covers, you're like, yep, I know who that's from. And that makes you more memorable and it makes you more cohesive in your branding to know that that is a set from that particular shop. People like consistency. We like routines, we like consistency as people, we like to know what's what to expect. So when we have a brand that is showing us that consistency within their look of what they're creating, then it's just a plus for that person to go, oh, I really like that stuff. I've seen it once and I recognize who that's from. So when they go looking and they see another set, they know who that is from and they're aware of that person's store. So I just suggest, it's, it's basically a harsh truth because if you do not have your clip art covers that look semi-similar to your storefront, or what like your branding is, or just even the way that you present it, then it can be less memorable over time. Mind you, I do know there's a few different types of buyers, but when you are getting teachers that are buying clip art that they want to collect from you and they want to use multiple things from your store with, it's good to have that cohesive look in your covers so people know that's from you. Alright, number 15. Creating your terms of use doesn't have to be hard. It does take a bit of time, but it doesn't have to be hard. You basically just need to make it very clear what the person that is buying this clip art can and can't do with your work. Make it very explicit, make it very clear. It does not have to be anything too crazy, but do make sure you write in the things that you are happy for that person to do with. So if you're not okay with them using it in coloring in sheets or anything like on print on demand, you make sure on in your terms of use you write you cannot do these particular things with my clip art or whatever, however you're gonna word it. Uh, but make sure it's just a very clear what you can do and what you can't do with it. And if they require credit and whether you want it flattened or whether you can use it for movable images, etc, etc. Alright, number 16, people eventually will reach out to ask you questions or ask for requests. That is just something that happens over time. People will ask you questions about your clip art and people will ask you for particular requests. Some people might choose to email you, they like your work, and they'll be asking you whether you'll be willing to do either a custom piece of work or just create a certain thing that they're looking for in your style. It just happens over time and when you start to build up your store, it's happened to me a couple of times and I'm not the biggest store on TBT, but it has happened to me a couple of times, but people will choose to reach out to you and ask you things. So just be mindful that's a harsh truth that happens to I guess all the clip artists that are on there that have a working store that people will reach out. It's gonna happen. Totally up to you whether you choose to take on those requests or whether you just say thank you so much for the consideration I'll add it to my list. Alright number 17 is it's okay to experiment with your clip art style. I honestly am still experimenting with my clip art style. I'm still trying to find my style. I did like a clip art, uh, coming up with my clip art style video like ages ago and I thought these were the people that I was going to create and then I found like I didn't have the time to create them and so it was a whole thing but I haven't created any more sets from that particular style that I wanted to create but I've just done more things that I've been able to do and I've spent a lot of time in between figuring out things that I like to do, trialing new things and I just want to say it's okay. It's okay to do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with trialing different things and figuring out over time. Like this, this is a process that might even take a couple of years. For myself, I think it's going to take a couple of years to I really, really get to know truly what my style is, what I enjoy creating. And yeah, at this point, because I'm just like a year and a bit in, I'm still figuring out what I truly like, what is profitable, what brings me happiness in making. And yeah. They're just things to know and it's okay if you are starting off with something and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't like this anymore, let me try something different. It's okay to experiment. All right, number 18, people on TBT won't always leave reviews. A lot of the time teachers will download something even if it's for free and 
a lot of the time they won't leave a review and that's totally okay don't take it personally people that do have time they will take the time to if they're really happy with their product too they will take the time to leave a review just think also you as a teacher when you're busy how many times have you left a review on something but I just want to say if you are not a teachers pay teachers person like or even if you are a teachers pay teachers person watching this video it's in everyone's best interest especially on paid products you guys it is in everyone's best interest to leave a review because TPT values you as a customer and when you actually leave a review on a paid product that you've purchased you actually get some credits that you can then use towards other TPT purchases so if you are someone that buys on TPT frequently or is looking at investing in TPT clip art then make sure you leave reviews on paid products that you have purchased because then you get a little bit of a throwback to you when you're going to buy something else and we all like a bit of a discount don't we so why not just take you know a minute out of your day leave a review an honest review and get a little bit of change to help for your next purchase that's like that's it's good it doesn't happen on free products but i will say creators really do appreciate you if you take the time to leave a, a review on a free product because obviously it takes us creative energy and time to create these free products for you guys then to go use commercially or whatever so it's, so it's actually really nice when someone takes the time to leave a review on a free product because it just shows oh you know they've taken the time to go and review this and rate this and uh, give it however many stars I think it is worth or whatever and it's just nice when someone does that on a free product because you've put that out there and that energetic exchange they've come and they've then reviewed it but just know not everyone will leave a review and that's just the harsh truth <laughs> number 19 I've already spoken a little bit on this but you will make mistakes like I said in the very very beginning I made a mistake of creating Lego clip art I should not have done that I regret it I'm glad that it was kind of on the earlier days of my store, not Talazo Clip Art, but in my first store, that's what happened. And I soon learned from that when I realized, oh my goodness, that is not allowed. I just had no idea because I just, I didn't do any courses. I didn't do anything. I didn't study it. I just kind of uploaded and yeah, it was not good. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing at the time. And wishing, there was nothing on YouTube about Clip Art that, was saying this so I just didn't know and I didn't and that goes for products as well not just clip art products as well things that you see if you are someone that buys on TPT if you see with someone that's made like a rainbow fish product or whatever they're probably doing that illegally just because you see something on TPT doesn't mean they have the rights to do it just because you see someone else doing something doesn't mean it's okay so just be mindful of that when you are looking and purchasing products and supporting people that are actually you know benefiting of other people's trademarked work again we're imperfect human beings we make mistakes mistakes will happen like if you are in the clip art community this is like an insider thing so if you're not in the clip art community you won't understand this but like who knew about the whole igloo thing right like who knew that was going to be an issue and some of the characters of you know innocent intentions of some of the clip art that was put out there obviously and the whole takedown issues and whatever else but over time obviously you know society changes and we become a bit more aware of inclusivity and stuff like that so things happen and you do have to be flexible with those things and just know that mistakes happen and sometimes you know when we learn we can try and do better all right 20 this one's interesting but some people in your life just won't get or understand what you're doing here okay so let's just talk about my fiance for a second so my fiance he didn't know what I was trying to do online like he's still a bit confused to be completely honest but he's slowly understanding now he, the first time I kind of said to him, I've like, when I, speaking of the irregular shape thing, I remember we were in the car and we were driving um, for a little road trip somewhere with a little man in the back and um, I like checked my TBT uh, dashboard and I was like, hey, guess what? I literally just saw an irregular shape clip art set and I showed him it and he's like, what? Because he's English. He's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I sold this today. And he's like, why? Why do, why do, why do, why? <laughs> and I was just like, 
people wanted to use it as clip art to use in a product that they might sell. And he just didn't get it. He's like, what the heck? Like, why would anyone buy that? <laughs> like, he was shocked. And so what I mean is like people close to you don't know sometimes what you're trying to do. And they will have their two cents on everything if you tell them. But let me just say, you do you. They haven't done all the research into this. They haven't done all the things to know that you can actually earn money selling clip art online so just take it with a grain of salt nod your head and just be like okay in this case like my fiance he's getting better understanding at first he was like what are you like he he didn't get it he didn't understand why teachers would buy clip art like he just didn't get it and so now he's getting it a bit more now that I've like shown him a few more things and he's like oh okay he's kind of getting it now but yeah I'm just saying people close to you sometimes just won't get it and when you talk to people in your real life you know they literally look at you kind of puzzled like what what are you going on about <laughs> and so yeah it can be kind of like not isolating but a little bit because you know people don't get it but people that do get it like when you are part of the Facebook groups and communities and like whatever people get it there are people out there that get it just know that there are people out there that are doing this there are people out there that get it um, but just know some people close to you won't get it you don't have to convince them you don't need to try and get them to understand if you don't want to and if they don't want to know about it don't no stress don't worry about it Hakuna Matata <laughs> Alright, 21. This is a bit of a controversial one. It's kind of a harsh truth because I just think it is something that you don't have to do. But basically, you don't have to market straight away. When you start a clip art store, you know, you'll hear down the grapevine, eventually you have to start marketing, doing this, doing that. There's so much more complexities when it comes to the whole business side of TPT. When you first start, you just sim you think in simple form. I want to create clip art, I want to sell it. That's what you think about. You know, I want to help people. And then you come down to it and then you, f you realize the intricacies of what it takes to make this actually a business. And so in that process, it's controver this is controversial because, you know, some people might say, oh, start marketing from day dot. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think hone in on what you're trying to create. Really, the product creation, that's what I've been working on for this last year. I've really been trying to build up my store and on a side note, I guess in some way I'm indirectly marketing because I have this YouTube channel, but I didn't start this YouTube channel to market. I didn't start it because I wanted to market my resources. I wanted to start this because there was no information on ClipArt as a Teachers Pay Teacher seller on YouTube. And so I was like, I want to fill that gap because no one else is sharing and if I can help other people start this and have a little bit of a side income for themselves, you know, I feel like I'm doing some good there. So I wanted to do that, I wanted to share with others kind of my experience and then, you know, help others out there too. That was my initial reasoning for starting this channel really and so in that context, I just still think you don't need to start marketing straight away. If you want to and you know how to, then go for it, but don't stress yourself, don't overwhelm yourself in that first, even just that first year. Really that first year I feel like you should just create and get better and really hone in on what you want your store to be, what you want to create because it really depends on how much you can create uh, in a year as well. If you want your store to you know, build and grow, you need to also build and grow the products that are in it. Now mind you, you can obviously have a successful store with less than 100 products, but they have to be really high demand products for that to work. For a lot of us, we are going to have to require a lot of quantity, obviously high quality, but quantity so that there's options from your store. So I don't want to get into the whole nitty gritty of it but just know you don't have to do marketing straight off the bat if that's overwhelming to you put it to the side for a minute get better at your craft get better at creating your clip art and just being that consistent with yourself to know that you're showing up for your store all right 22 we're almost getting there guys 22 is success is subjective 
So the bigger question here, with success being subjective, what I mean by that is everyone has a different definition of success. Some people see success as, oh, you have a million dollars. Other people see success as I get to stay home with my children and I can earn an income. Some people see success as, you know, I've been able to help teachers out there in the world, all around the world, and earn a little bit of money from what I love to do. Success is different for everyone. Not everyone is, I mean, money is a byproduct of your work, but it is not something that needs to be defined by success. You don't have to define success as just money. You can define it any way you like because it's all about perspective. You're going to be different to me. My values are different to you. So it will depend on how you view success. On the grand scheme of things, the bigger question here is, are you happy? Does this bring you joy? There's a lot of people out there that have a lot of money but they're not happy. So we know that money doesn't always bring happiness. And to be honest, happiness is more, in, in many ways more important and more, I know that happiness can't pay the bills, but happiness also is something that if you do have a lot of money and you're unhappy, you know, that's also a not a nice place to be in either. So think about that. Think about that when you are thinking about success and you get to define your success. You get to define what it means for if you're, you're successful. You don't have to be earning millions of dollars. You don't have to be earning $100,000 off this. In other terms, you might want to and you might strive for that and that is totally cool too. You do you. But just know everyone's idea of success is different. Now, number 23, clip art is important. So clip art is a form of visual art in a digital form. And with that, a lot of people might think, you know, it's not that important. But I beg to differ. I think clip art is extremely important, it's depending on what particular niche you are in, but visuals in general are important. The world around us is filled with visuals, with different graphic elements, and we've, we've especially in the now, like in today's generation, graphics, drawings, illustrations, anything that can allow us to see a representation of something in a in a visual form is important because it helps us as humans understand what something is not only that it engages us as young children if you are creating clip art for young children or for teachers to use to engage young children that's important because we as teachers know how hard it is to engage children if we you wouldn't give a child a whole big textbook and expect them to be engaged. We get children engaged by using visuals, whether that be photos, whether that be drawings, illustrations, the whole lot. And clip art is included in that when you are creating a digital product for somebody across the world to be able to then access. So clip art is important. You go and you look on TBT, and especially with the, the lower years, I mean, I'm coming from a place, I'm early childhood trained, so obviously I have a sweet spot for younger children, and a lot of the clip art needed is for younger children, but mind you, there is a need also for higher clip art for um, older children that still require visual elements as well. Like me personally, I am so visual, and I'm an adult, and I love seeing things like visually represented. My brain is like, I feel like my brain works more creatively than it does like logically. My math skills, oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, I'm not even going to go there. I would love to be incredible at maths. And it's not to say that I can't learn because I've never put myself saying that I'm bad at maths. I'm not the best and I have much more improvement to go. But Maths is not my strong suit, you guys. That is not my strong suit. But I'm smart in other areas. So I just take that with a grain of salt. And I know that when it comes to artistic things, I feel like I thrive in that more so. And so I just think clip art is important. I feel passionate about it. I feel like to allow other people to then use your own creative energetic work is a blessing for others because some people can't draw. Some people don't have the time to draw. Some people like teachers that are creating for other teachers to create these amazing, engaging, um, high impacting, visually appealing products, a lot of it has to do with the clip art that's used. Again, photos can go so far, but 
you know, look at storybooks, for example. You know, as a child, we love seeing those beautifully illustrated books. It's similar to clip art in that way, just in a different form. Clip art is important. It shows a visual representation of what you're trying to tell or what you're trying to get across or learn. So that's just my two cents. I just think it's important. I think clip art's cool. It just is what it is. <laughs> I'll always believe that. So 24, we did discuss about how success is subjective, but I do also want to say this. You deserve to be paid for your creative efforts. Now, what I mean by this is not coming from a you deserve to be paid kind of situation. No, no, no. I mean, when you creatively make something, you can't always just put every single thing out for free. There needs to be an exchange of your time and your effort and your creative energy. You have placed that love, that creative time, that energy that someone else didn't have to do for them to then utilize that and to be able to benefit and profit off. So when you're creating clip art, you deserve to be paid for the work that you've done. Okay. So don't ever feel like, oh, you know, I'm just going to put everything for free because A, free doesn't pay the bills and B, you know, that time and effort you've spent into creating that for somebody else because clip art, when you get into clip art on TPT, you go in basically creating it with the mindset that these clip art creations that you've made, someone can utilize, if that's in your terms of use, of course, someone can utilize to benefit or create something for themselves that they potentially could sell to other people as well. So with that said, you deserve like, some, if, for example, if someone buys something from for $3 for you and they've used that in their product and then they go on to sell $1,000 worth of that product that they made using a few bits of pieces of clip art that, was, that helped sell that product, then yeah, you deserve to be paid for the creative energy that you took to create that $3 product or however you know much that was valued at. So just remember that we don't need to be thinking about the whole starving artist thing here guys. Creative work is important, creative energy is important, artistic abilities out there need to be more more valued I think as well because at least equally valued because it does take a lot of time energy and effort all right on the home run number 25 on TBT followers don't equal sales I will say that again followers don't equal sales okay so you could have two followers and you could still be earning uh, an amount of money off your TBT store but obviously as your store grows you will gain attraction of followers but I find that they do just kind of trickle in. You can have a lot of followings and earn less amount of money than someone else that has a smaller following but have really high demand products and so followers don't always equal sales. So if you see someone that doesn't have a lot of followers it doesn't mean that they're not making money. I have actually seen in some Facebook groups someone that had like I don't know like 20 followers and they said that they were making like over a thousand dollars and I'm like whoa girl good for you and they only had like 20 followers so followers don't e equal sales you guys so don't get caught up on followers on TPT it's only really a social proof type of thing and then also if people want to follow you because they want to see what are the releases that you have basically I just wouldn't get too caught up on the followers type of thing they'll come when they come all right number 26 very specific to TPT but you are bound to get three to four star ratings <laughs> don't worry you guys three to four star ratings are still good everyone comes from different perspectives of what is really great if they're really happy with it some people might write in their review or their feedback I this product was amazing and rate it literally like four or three stars Sometimes they do that and they just rush through the process and they just clicked whatever. But other times they do it because they're coming from a contextual space where, you know, three, three stars means actually really good and four stars is even better. Five stars is like perfect. And we all know some people are going to say, well, nothing's ever perfect. There's always something to be improved on. So they'll never give a five star. So it is what it is. Don't get too caught up on that. You'll have people that give five stars. You have people that give four stars and you have people that get three stars. The only stars that I'll be worried about is if you get one, one and two, that's kind of flagging the product for a particular issue. But mind you, if it's a technical issue now, this is not just speaking on clip art, but if it's a technical issue, that is not necessarily your fault for that review and you can contact TPT to ask them to remove a review if it's to do with if they're giving you a one star because they weren't able to actually 
open the product because that was up to them to be able to have that knowledge to open the product. Um, so anyway, I won't go too far into that, but just know that three to four stars is totally okay. Don't get too sad about it if you get a three or a four star. It happens. I've looked at some of the other big clip artists and I think their work's amazing. And sometimes people will be giving them four stars as well, three to four stars. And I'm like, how? This, this, was a, this looks like a fantastic product. It's all perspective, guys. So, yeah. All right, number 27. Business is seasonal. Just like with any business on the planet, business is seasonal. There are high points, there are low points. There are times that you earn more in the year and there are times that you earn a lot lower in the year. June and July apparently are more so where there's a lot more of a drop in sales for a lot of TPT sellers. Interesting enough, I don't know if it's because I'm still on my early days, I found June and July to be quite profitable on my end of things and I sell clip art and I've only been doing it for this full year. Um, so I still need to see more data. But mm, when I compare my June and July from this year to last year's, there's been a big increase. So that's been promising on my end for June and July. However, just like anything, like I said with business, it's seasonal. So say if you create products or clip art sets that are like, you know, holiday themed or, or Halloween themed, Valentine's themed, whatever, you might find a spike in those seasons where more of that type of clip art is selling. It really depends on what your store is offering, but just know that it's seasonal and if you are creating clip art, think about the seasons that are coming and thinking about what you can create to you know, maximize some sales throughout the year, to have evergreen things that could sell all year round and to have seasonal things that could give you a bit of a boost in profits when each seasonal time of the year come about. All right, 28. If you wanna take this seriously, what is serious, they say, if you're wondering, how do I take my TPT business serious? Basically, just think of it like a relationship. You can be in like a casual fling relationship or you can be in a serious committed relationship. If you're in a casual fling type of situation, situationship, <laughs> then you're just gonna be kind of seeing that person here and there, doing your thing, enjoying life, just doing bits and bobs from time to time. If you're in a committed, serious relationship, you're showing up to that person each and every day because that's the one that you want to be with. That's the person that you love. So I'm not saying that you have to be in love with your business or anything like that. I'm just kind of trying to put it in a perspective where if you're wondering, how do I take this clip art thing seriously? Or how do I take Teachers Pay Teachers seriously? There are your two distinctions. Are you treating it like a casual relationship where you're just doing it here and there? And if you are, and you're enjoying it, and you're just enjoying the casual situationship, that's fine, do that. But if you wanted to take it more seriously, then, then you really need to consider, okay, this is a commitment that I'm making to myself, to my business, and I've got to show up to this person because they need me, I want them in my life. This needs to be a situationship where I am serious about this particular project. That's just the two distinctions, casual versus serious. So if you want it to work, you really need to take it seriously. It can work to a certain degree with a bit of a casual situationship and you can still get profits from that, uploading from time to time. Not saying that that can't work for you if that's just all the time that you've got and you're just happy to do that, that's fine. But if you wanted to really grow this, and again, I'm still growing, I'm still in my early days, but I, I know I need to do the grafting. I, need, I know I need to do much more work into this. I've still got a few years that I've really got to you know, work hard at this to even be able to get to where, what, where I want to be with it. But I've committed myself, I've put a ring on my business's finger to be like, me and you here for the long run, that is how I see my business at this point of time. All right, number 28 is there are different shoppers on TPT. Some people won't even actually get to your store. They might just be looking for one particular product. Say if they're, for example, looking for a camouflage digital paper set and that's the only thing that they're looking for, they might just go to TPT search bar, camouflage digital paper set, oh yeah, that's what I need, purchased, downloaded, all good to go. They didn't even reach your store, they didn't even look at your store, and you get those type of buyers. 
they might come back if you have in your terms of use, uh, you know, and they've made it all pretty and stuff like that and they're like, oh, they've got other things that they offer in the store, I might go back to their store, whatever. They might choose to go back, but there are those type of buyers that just want to buy one thing because that's the only thing that they're looking for at that point in time. There are other shoppers also that are wanting to collect your work because they want to use it in multiple things. and with the advice on TBT and clip artists, this is where you know resource sellers and clip art kind of work in conjunction when they are like successful, one in the same really is basically when you have a clip artist and you like their work, a lot of you know successful sellers say invest in that same style of clip art where you can so your your products are cohesive and consistent all the way through. That helps also with your branding. So if you really like a certain clip artist's work, you know, it's it's really important or not important. You can choose whoever you want to buy from depending on what you're creating. But if you are wanting a really cohesive look throughout your store, if you're a TPT resource seller, then investing in a clip artist style that you like that has the options to do a lot of different things with is going to be in your benefit. And so when you do that, that is helping the clip artist because then you're collecting their work basically. You've got a lot of sets for that from that particular clip artist which helps support that clip artist uh, in general and then also helps you be more cohesive if you're a TBT seller as a resource seller in your work. So that's just something to consider. Alright, we've made it to the very last harsh truth. Harsh truth 30 is you can do this if you put your mind to it. Yep, I said that. If you believe you can, you will. It all starts with you. You need to believe in yourself. You need to be your biggest cheerleader. You need to stop with the self-negative talk. You need to stop with the limiting beliefs. And you need to say, why not me? And you need to say, I can do this. And even if you are just beginning, you can say, I can learn, I can do hard things, I can learn. If you really want to make something out of this, if you really want to just give it a good crack and a good go, and again, success is subjective. You might be someone that like, might just be thinking, you know, if I could just earn an extra $200 a month from selling clip art because you're a creative person, that would be amazing to you, then you, you can do this. You can do this. You might be someone that wants to do this a bit more fuller um, in, you know, really push your energy to make this a full-time thing. You know, some people uh, that have shared experiences that I've read online and stuff like that say, look, I didn't plan on becoming a clip artist and it happened, you know, because they had experiences with, say, they were illustrating and then, you know, they fell into, uh, they were home a lot because of a certain reason, whether that be, you know, health-wise or they've had children or whatever. And then they've like picked up this thing and then they've grown it over time and it's become very lucrative for them. And one thing I love about this is as a clip artist or somebody that is creating digital clip art, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into this. But when you put a product or a clip art set out into the world, and this goes also for TPT resource sellers as well, but when you are a clip artist, it's, it's like that is your creative work someone's going to be using then that can be sold multiple times over and over and over again. When you're not showing up to work every single day, you can still be getting paid. It's a semi-passive business. So I see there's a lot of benefits from selling these clip art sets, which are digital products. And the way the world's going at the moment, you guys, we are entering this web 3.0 type of vibe. And a lot of it seems to have a lot of very visual elements ingrained in it. So if you can learn these skills, if you can learn how to create clip art for yourself, I don't think it's a skill that is going to you know, be a bad skill to learn. I think if anything, it's going to make you more valuable as a person if you can create things like this. Because once you start to learn things like this, then you can start to learn other things in the digital space. And I'm just saying this because, you know, I'm coming from a place where I never made a dollar online. I didn't even know if this was possible. I believe you can do this. Just put your head down if you really want to make this something and really put the effort in to create clip art that you love and just to provide value to others out there. Think about clip art sets that you could create that people are going to love, enjoy and like and enjoy the process of it along the way. With that said, I went from going from 20 to 30, so you're welcome. <laughs> but 
Hopefully, if you are wanting to get into the clip art game, some of these harsh truths, I don't know how harsh they are, but like these harsh truths that I named can just help you out with starting and just getting an idea of the space. And I know for me, if I had a video like this, kind of saying some things like this, that would have helped me understand the whole clip art scene a bit more because there's not many people sharing um, freely online, even paid. Like I've looked for courses, I've looked for things from clip artists and there's not a lot out there. So hopefully that this helps in some way, shape or form. And wishing you health, wealth and happiness in your TPT journey and in life. And I'll see you in my next video where I'm actually going to create a free clip art set for you guys and we're going to talk about manifestation. <laughs> I know, someone actually asked me about uh, my manifestation story so I thought why not share them. Alrighty guys, feel free to check out these videos down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Adios!